even before you got to freaking just and uh, justice league you had that bomb ass batman v superman which was a pile of trash So let's talk about it. The f- the failure of a film in which we're lied to. I want to start there. We, 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 what happened? So we were told that this was one of the greatest comic book movies ever. YouTube um, content creators. Um, reviewers, early guys, we're told this is amazing, this is amazing, this is superb, this is amazing. Because, I don't want to say it, but I'll say it. We're guys paid by Warner Brothers. A lot of money, 200 plus million if you include the marketing. This cannot afford to fail because we will lose too much money. Let's try and pay off these content creators and reviewers who get the chance to watch a movie early to now say, yo, it's amazing. Or the flip side is, you always get these things where if you have an early screening and so forth, you're always in the mindset of like, you, you, you want to like it. You want to like it. Because, you see, The Flash isn't a garbage film. But I find The Flash an incredibly pointless film. It's pointless. Because you watch it and you say, okay, okay, what's the point of this film? What are you trying to do? I get it. You're rebooting everything. And I'll get to the whole rebooting it. But when you're just looking at the Flash as a, as, a, as a whole, Michael Keaton dies twice. Michael Keaton's Batman dies twice. And Superman's, and Supergirl dies. Now, here's the thing, though. The general story idea, the time travel story idea, it's actually a good idea, which means that no matter what you do, you're not going to say what's up. He was always going to fail. And the story, the moral of the story is, don't mess with time. Fate is fate. No matter what you do, fate is his fate. That was all points. But the way it was executed and handled was extremely sloppy. Because let's, let me be real. I'm not actually going to be one of those guys that's going to go for the low-hanging fruits. The low-hanging fruits is the garbage cartoon-like CG. The CG was so laughable that I was like, okay, I'm just going to pretend that this is a cartoon. So the CG was not an, an issue. What was an issue was, I've seen this before. We've been here before. Because by the time we go to the final fight, and you will not see the action, I'm like, this is stupid. I just got off the back of watching Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. The whole point of art, two things you should do in, in art. Make it good, <laughs> so make sure it's good. Something refreshing. Something new. Oh, I haven't seen this before. Oh, This is new. Oh, wow. Interesting. A whole new visage. But when you watch The Flash, I'm like, you see, first three, let's put it in three acts. The first act, not bad. You know, good build up. Ezra Miller playing off of the the characters really well. Shouts to the the groomer, choking a girl, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Second act, we now, now see the introduction of Batman. The introduction. I was close to leaving the cinema when you saw them introduce Michael Keaton without Bomas, Gandalf, buy one, get eight free makeup look that he had. So that's a dumb way he had. It was stupid. The music being played, it being so much, it was freaking st- stupid. But, you know, you, you went past, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. A bit up and down. But when I look at the final fight, the third act with Zod and so forth, I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is stupid. You see, you compare this to, let's say, Civil War. When you look at Civil War, you can see there is a level of sophistication and application and understanding as to what is happening. There is a storyline of fights, and there just seems to be a greater sensibility into the execution of the fights. See, I'm not a big fan of um, Infinity War. Like, I just, I just, I just didn't, I didn't really like like the film. But what was good was look at that fight between Thanos. Um, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Peter Quill, and everything. There is just a better sense of scope, understanding, and the dimensions of of what is happening in terms of choreography. Just go watch John Wick 4. And I'm looking at this final fight where 
he's jumping up and down, the sparks are flying, he's going into the speed force to see these balls running around. I'm like, this is a mess. It is a complete and utter mess. And I'm like, this is why I don't want to watch any superhero movies. Like, they, they, they put a trailer for Blue Beast. I'm like, what is this trash? So, you see that? Okay, how did The Flash fail? <laughs> put yourself into the mind of the average viewer. The Ezra Miller thing is within social media. That wasn't the main thing. People thought, oh, Ezra Miller. No. Into the mind of the average viewer, you look at that trailer, it's like, okay, what? And here's the thing. The big selling points was those guys that grew up with Michael Keaton's Batman. Michael Keaton is back. But even when you look at the trailer and how it's presented, that wasn't even marketed well. Because even for me, who this is my guy and so forth, I was like, this, this isn't really even Michael Keaton, because is it? Because why is this guy fighting in the middle of daylight? Why is he jumping up and down like a freaking trampoline? So look, man, I mean, the average moviegoer, there was, there's just, there was just no real interest to go and watch this. Because for the average goer, like, okay, what is this? DCEU, what is happening? Why is Batman here? Because there's a sense of confusion. Again, put your mind yourself into the mind of the average viewer. The Batman just came out with Robert Pattinson, I think, last year. Why is there another Batman? So you now have Ben Affleck as a Batman. You now have um, Michael Keaton as a Batman. It's confusing. It's con confusing. And this leads me to a point of this whole DC. DC won't listen. And I get it because of business. The um, expanded universe concept is great business. Forget about the, the stories and how interesting it is to watch as a story. It's amazing business. Because what it is is that you are guaranteed viewership in every single film. Well, if, to, to understand this, you could watch this. To understand, you watch this. So what was beautiful about the MCU from a business point of view was we are always going to get a certain amount of viewers coming through because they feel, they feel that I have to watch this film to see that. So it's, like, it's an ongoing series. And that is what this David Zaslav and all these guys at WB want. They want to copy Marvel. But what you don't understand is Justice League isn't Avengers. It just ain't. And no matter how hard you try, it, you just are not going to re replicate that. The saying lightning in a bottle, what is lightning in a bottle? The whole point of the saying is that it's actually very hard to have lightning in a bottle. It's like a once in a lifetime thing because of how rare it is to capture lightning in a bottle. That's tenure from 08 to 2017, from Iron Man to Endgame. That was lightning in a bottle. It was lightning in a bottle. It was carefully orchestrated, carefully put together, and it worked. Two key things was, 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 was very keen working, which is why the DC are messed up. First was straight out at the gate, Iron Man. Danny Jr., also going to the actor, very good actor. John Favreau, very decent director. Decent, good film. A good film. Couple that with our friend Snyder, Man of Steel. Man of Steel was crap. <laughs> Great opening. Two thirds of that film was garbage. So when you compare Man of Steel to Iron Man, straight out of the, the gate, you have a quality film in Iron Man. Straight out of the gate, you have a garbage film in Man of Steel. Straight out of the gate, you have a great lead in Robert Downey Jr. Straight out of the gate, you have a garbage, cardboard, cut-out, boring <laughs> tree trunk, plank of wood in Henry Cavill. You move forward further. Another key point for MC, what was it? Avengers. If Avengers failed, everything fails. Avengers was singly the most important movie in the entire MCU. More than more than anything, that was the most important thing. Because I remember when I saw those trailers, I was like, this looks stupid. This looks, I said, this looks stupid. I watched it, and I was like, oh, damn. And I ended up watching it three times in the cinema. So for Avengers, it worked. Which meant that that was the catalyst to really say, no, this whole thing of all the superheroes all together, it's kind of work, and the audience can buy it. Coupled with Justice League, pick any version. The... Um, 
the version by the, the I've, I've got just Sweden version, garbage. I watched the four hour Snyder version, garbage. So what's that our version came out? Whether it was the Snyder version or the Whedon version, it was garbage. It was crap. <laughs> it was awful. But even before that, even before you got to freaking just and uh, Justice League, you had that bomb ass Batman v Superman. Which was a pile of trash. It was a pile of trash. So can you see um a kind of um trend here? The common denominator here for DC is Snyder. You give everything to Snyder. Whereas um you have again again his, his name for Kevin Feige. On one hand, you have Kevin Feige who He's picking the director, the writer, the director, the writer. This For this project, this director works well. For this project, this writer work, work, works well. So Kevin Feige, he's orchestrating it. Snyder was orchestrating everything. So you, you, you put your entire universe in the hands of Zack Snyder, who he's not a filmmaker. He's a great visualist. He makes very cool visuals. But he does, he's not a filmmaker. And my lord, he's not a kind of guy that that you should pretty much pin your hopes of your of the entire universe on. So, and this is what I've said before, because I know they won't listen, because you now have James Gunn here, and they're going to try and now re reboot everything. It's not going to work. The DCU is not going to work. You're going to confuse fans, but beyond beyond that, fans they're done. They're done with the whole interconnectivity. So they, are, they are done with it. Superhero fatigue doesn't exist. What exists is bad movie fatigue. That's what it is. It's called bad movie fatigue. <laughs> okay, People are tired of watching crap films. A good movie is a good movie is a good movie. Make a great story with great writing, execute it well. People will love it. People will watch it. Which is what you saw from across the Spider-Verse. So... My advice for DC, which they won't listen, but my advice is the Batman, Joker, make standalone films. Get a, get a David Fincher or get an Aronofsky and make an adaptation of Batman Year One. Make an adaptation of Dark Knight Re Returns. Make a singular standalone Superman story. Make a singular standalone Waterman story. Make a Green Lantern series. Make a Green Lantern film. Because that can easily be like a intergalactic um, police force film of a Green Lantern film. So my thing though is you have DC's strength is you can make far more edgier stuff than Marvel. But do you know why they'll never do it? Greed. There's too much potential money on the table. Because DC do that, bro. If we can get this whole universe right. We will have money here, 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 because people feel the need to watch these films. But I'm saying to you guys, it ain't going to work. I think we'll just look at the disaster that was The Flash right now, which I'm sure would have left a lot of bad taste in people's mouths. Because, see, I don't know whether the audience will give you a second chance. That's why I made the point where straight out the gate, Iron Man. So this is MCU. MCU were here, Iron Man. Boom. So straight out of the gate, the brand is already already has great credits how do you raise the dirty dirty horrible bad credits that dc have <laughs> you know because the general audiences did not like snyder's films as was seen through the box office they didn't like, like it so if we now have a new wonder woman a new aquaman the general audience member were like oh this aquaman oh no 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 so in their mind, they don't even know whether it's a reboot or anything. They're like, Ugh. but here's the thing, though. As I said again, a good movie is a good movie is a good movie. If Superman Legacy comes out now from James Gunn and it's great, it's a really good film. Then maybe you can have people on 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 board. I still am not sure whether people are really investing in this whole universe stuff. I don't know. I don't know. But my advice is this whole thing of the. MCU, DCU, Expanded Universe, different superheroes, it's it's done. It's finished. It's done. It was a great ride. It was a lightning in a bottle. And I think that we should feel privileged that we witnessed that amazing run from 08 
that culminated in, I think it was 2017 with, with Endgame. It was amazing. It was, it was an amazing ride, an amazing run. But it's over right now. It's now time for something new. But we wait and we seek.